Hey, hey everyone. Today's video is about the ups and downs of having a salon suite. Okay, I wrote down some things that I want to go over uh, for anyone thinking about going into having a salon suite from coming from a booth renting situation, okay? First of all, let me tell you why I got my salon suite is because of the pandemic. Okay, the salon that I used to work at closed down right in the middle of the pandemic. So the owner had everyone come and get our things out of the salon. And I was at home for a couple of months until the city opened back up. Okay, when the city opened back up, I uh, got myself a salon suite. Now, the reason behind getting a salon suite instead of going back into the salon because the pandemic was still at high speed or, you know, was still like new. And I wanted to make sure that my clients weren't uh, sitting in chairs and shampoo bowls that someone didn't wash out or someone was coming to your, into your space and there was, um, they weren't cleaning up behind themselves or their clients. And the suite allows you to work in your own space by yourself, just you and your client. So that was my whole reason for getting it because I wanted to just have that one-on-one -on -one connection, that one-on-one -on -one service provided for the clients. Now, when I first opened up, the clients were all like happy to come. Uh, a lot of them were coming. And then, you know, and at the same time, you guys, I had to let everyone know that the prices had to go up because of the rent for renting out the space and so forth and so on. Because salon booth rental is one price, which is lower than owning and, or renting, because you don't own it, renting your own salon suite. So let's talk about the rent. Okay, the rent is the most important thing um, for having a salon suite as far as you need to know if you are going to be able to pay the rent, even if your clients are not coming which I put that number one because that's the main thing that will keep you going even if you don't have any clients coming. So you want to do this because you don't have, I mean, you need to know this, that you have a certain amount of money in the bank if your clientele slows down or whatever, if something happens, okay? It could be that you got sick, car accident, you know, anything, something like that. If something happened to you, you couldn't work, but you wanted to keep your salon uh, sweet, you need to know that you will be able to pay the rent because they are not going to just hold your spot. <laughs> They're not just going to hold your spot. Okay. I don't, I don't, I don't think so. Okay. You still need to pay your rent because if you lived in an apartment, uh, your rent still need to be paid. Okay. At home, you still need to pay your mortgage. Okay. So rent, rent due. Okay. Rent due. Okay. So, okay. The next thing I want to talk about is client retention. I'm looking down at my notes. Client retention. Okay, you need clients to run your business because without these clients, how, how are you going to run your business? Uh, okay, like I said, when I first opened up, um, that was in 2020, June in 2020, um, the clients, they were all coming every, and, and they were referring people. <sighs> They were referring people because everyone wanted to let their friends know that, you know, they can come to the salon suite and they wanted to have uh, their life being somewhat normal again as far as coming to get their hair done. And they were going to come to a safe environment to get their hair done. So, yeah, everybody was coming. A lot of people were coming. So I didn't have no problem when I first opened up. OK, so the next thing is, uh, let's see, I want to talk about. Okay, so like I said, I'm, I'm, it's, it's, it's in the same bracket as um, client retention uh, because nowadays you need uh, social media. That's what I wanted to talk about. Uh, a lot of people use social media to uh, show off their work and, uh, you know, post styles on Facebook, Instagram, uh, all the social medias, whatever, wherever you can put them at. And um, I've done that. I've done that so much pre-pandemic i've done it and posted pictures here everywhere just did a whole lot of uh self-promoting myself other than um some of my clients uh referring me to somebody because the other thing is that you know your clients can uh refer you to other people uh to their friends and families but it's like 
I feel like they don't even want to do that, okay? And I'm like, I can't stay open if clients slack off coming and no one's referring people. Um, because uh, what happens is you'll end up paying rent and not making no money. That doesn't make any sense to stay in business. Okay, so let's see what else I want to go over. Yeah, if they don't want to talk you up, if your existing clients don't want to talk you up so that the... I mean, it's not up to them to do it, but if they don't want to talk you up, then they don't want to talk you up. You can't do nothing about it because it's your business and you're running it. So you have to do all of the things yourself. You have to make the executive decision to stay open. You have to make the executive decision to close down because if there's not enough people, then it's it's useless. It's, it just It's just useless to have it now. All right, let's talk about the uh, cleaning supplies. This is things that people don't discuss. You need money to clean. Okay, pre-pandemic, you still had to sanitize your um, hair tools, your combs, your shears, you know, all your, uh, anything that you could submerge in the solution, you needed to sanitize all of that stuff, okay? And, you know, they they have all types of things. You can, uh, they have clipper spray. Uh, you can clean your shears off. You can clean your shears off in the actual solution that you put your combs in. And, but it's like those type of cleaning supplies, you need to constantly buy this stuff, um, more so because of the pandemic. You need to constantly, constantly, constantly buy all of these things. Now, let's say cleaning supplies plus sanitation supplies that you have to buy because of the pandemic even more, okay? Because that's something you have to do too. Uh, after each client leaves out of my suite, I'm spraying down all the seats, the styling chair, the dryer chair, the shampoo bowl chair, and the shampoo bowl itself, and the handles on the door uh, to come in and out of the salon suite. I have to sweep, mop the floor. Not every, I don't have to mop the floor every single time a person uh, leaves, but if the floor is a little messy, that's what I end up doing. Sweep, mopping, cleaning, wiping, sanitizing, spraying. It's a lot, okay? Ordering supplies online, going to the beauty supply to buy, going to the beauty supply to buy supplies to do their hair. I mean, they don't know that you're doing a whole lot of work besides doing their hair um so the clients don't notice and you know so what i'm trying to wrap my mind around is if i'm going to close my salon suite and everyone keeps asking me uh, am i going to uh move to a regular salon i don't think so now closing the suite is something that's on my mind because it's almost time for me to renew my lease and I might do it and I might not do it. I'm trying to see um, if I'm going to act on another idea and that'll be another video if I'm going to tell you, excuse me, you guys like in another video, if I'm going to uh, close the suite or what I'm thinking about doing with the suite, I don't know, or somewhere else but not renting a booth per se i mean i don't know you know i'm trying to figure this out because these are the ups and downs of owning a salon suite because the rent is no joke you guys salon uh suite rent is no joke okay so i'm going to end this video and that's my video for today to post on my channel i know this isn't about my hair but it's still about hair and it's about my salon suite so i'll talk to you guys in the next video bye bye